Hi guys, if you want to skip spoilers then pause the video now and jump down to the description to find the timestamp for the beginning of the game. In this one we've got uh, a few things coming up but the main draw is most certainly the list of players in the lobby. So in this one we had 7 out of 8 players were in the top 250 uh, at the time of recording and so um, it sort of raised the stakes a little bit on that game both for MMR and for uh, Prestige I suppose. Um, so fortunately uh, I did rather well in this one with my usual Brute Poison build. Um, in the early rounds, check out the little mirror match between the two bounty hunters, that was a funny one. Uh, around round 10, there's a discussion uh, just after the Underlords are chosen on whether Eno or Yul are better uh, in a Brute Poison composition. Since I chose uh, Eno and Phoenix chose Yul, it led to that a little uh, discussion. And around round 16, there was a discussion, uh, someone in the chat was asking about overflowing and wanted my opinion on it. It, so I offer that up and it could be interesting for you and um, just at the end the um, the bloodthorn choice would you have gone with the bloodthorn or would you have re-rolled or maybe taken one of the other options available just interested to hear about that um, and last do you think it was the Wraith King? Do you think it was the DK Viper? Do you think it was just the composition or um, what else do you think led to the success of the build in this lobby? Enjoy the game guys and I'll see you for the next one Oh, Foster's in with us, Kentritza. This is a cool lobby. We've got Phoenix, Foster, Kentritza. Excellent, excellent. Let's see what that brings up the average MMR to. That's a high one. Fuck me. Lovely stuff. Full Lord Lobby with some, uh, about half the lobby in the top 200. More than half. Six out of eight in the top 200. Well, this is basically almost tournament level lobby. Beautiful. May the first one to hit level hunters or spirit mage <laughs> be the victor. I, on the other hand, am probably going Brute Poison. <laughs> and I'll just accept my third place and move on. Um, well, there's a small possibility we end up going Assassins here. Not huge, but eh, I'd rather roll. Let's see. So, Loves of Haste or Vip Booster. I think I'll take the Vip Booster. We do hit the two star. Kind of wish I'd gone for the gloves of haste now. That's balls. Hey, I'm kind of. How you doing, mate? Are you well? Oh fuck, I forgot to put the Vitstone on. Oh god, if I lose this, it's entirely my own fault. Oh shit. Oh, bad Shrook and targeting from me, good from him, not good, not good at all. Another really bad Shrook and... Oh god. Oh, the shame. The shame's gonna eat me alive if he Shrookens my bounty hunter, we're fucked. No oh, god! No! Oh! Oh, the shame! Fuck! It doesn't matter nearly as much as I'm making it sound like it does, but I care. I care deeply. Ah! Uh.
I mean, it created a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, atmosphere, so uh, I can't be too sad, I suppose. But on the other hand, I absolutely can. So we've hit the Brute Poison, um, and we've got the, the Pudge to frontline it, so that's decent. And also, that Pudge does hurt the, the, the Hunters that are looking for those that Pudge to frontline their Heartless Hunter stuff. So, um, overall, reasonably happy. Obviously, we didn't hit that Shaman Savage build that you see five out of eight players going for, but Poisoners is another legitimate way to go. Spirit Mage. Spirit Mage, Bones. I mean, to be fair, like, the thing is that Brute Poison beats pretty much everything except for the two top builds, which is Level Hunters and... Um, and Spirit Mage. And essentially, Level Hunters versus Brute Poison is very often quite a lot about the items and the good stuff and they're like what do you roll once you level up because they're both level builds and the question is who gets the better good stuff first and blah 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 but in an equal world level hunters tends to beat brute poison if they both hit but spirit mages just slaps um brute poison off the table at the end and uh, and level hunters tends to be the only reliable way to beat spirit mage and i use the word reliable in a relative sense well what we want is we don't want there to be a powerful spirit mage player this game um at the moment we've got one two three four people all collecting mage elements so now they're all good players as i say we have one of the highest level lobbies that i've seen um this lobby so 
nobody's going into quadruple contested mages it would be fucking suicide so what we're gonna see is we're gonna see a couple of those players drop out once they don't hit the mages or they do hit something else and then we'll see two players playing mages and the question is whether those two players fuck each other over enough to benefit me largely or not Right, to give you an idea, seven out of the eight players in this lobby are in the top 250 in the world. There's just Deifan who's just in here going, what the fuck am I doing here? Help get me out of this lobby. But if he high rolls, what he should do, if Deifan's listening, go for some high rolly fucking roll build and if you hit the amount of mmr you're gonna get from this lobby is nuts In the meantime, my brute, brute Poison opening is going very well. Um, we're hitting most of the key elements that we need. The Alchemist 2 star, if we can hit it reasonably soon, would be really, really nice. And... Uh, looks like we're... Nobody's really committed to mages at all. We hit the weaker NO, which is a real shame, but um, we'll still take him because good enough. But now we've got Trolls, Heartless, Brute, and Poison all on by round 10. That is pretty fucking delicious. And it looks like Phoenix is going for the same thing. He's got the Queen of Pain, which is obviously an improvement on what we've got. But he's gone with Yul, which I think is wrong for Brute Poison. Just my opinion. Um, I think Brute Poison has more than enough frontline on its own. And uh, that's pretty much all that Yul brings. So I, I, I think that's very wrong. Animals are um, hey Andy, we had a couple of rough lobbies, I'm afraid. I didn't play very well, and, um, and we, we shit the bed a little bit. But um, the, uh, the level of this lobby is high enough that if we do well, we, uh, we really should bring it back. So I'm not... I'm not in dismay, don't worry about it. But Phoenix, I assume you're still listening, so if you could let me know after the after the lobby why it was you um you picked the uh the Yule there, I'd be fascinated. Cause obviously if I'm missing something I'd much rather be corrected and uh, and learn. But I genuinely think that all six of the other Underlords are better. I'd rather have healing support on Essex with that than Yul.
Right, but I mean, let's go. Uh, all right. Okay, so we've got the Viper. That's excellent news. I also just can't imagine not wanting to put three stacks of poison on every single time he spins when you've got the poison alliance on board like that's that's nuts oh thank you very much andy bandy that's very kind drop in the prime sub there thank you very much appreciated Uh, Brute Hat or Mask of Madness? That is genuinely tricky. Uh, I think I will take the Mask of Madness, actually. I do like the Brute Hat, but uh, Mom is one of the stronger items in the game. We pick up the Viper nice and early. Hello there, madam. Hello there, indeed. Uh, do I want another Viper or another Alchemist? I think another Viper. We don't have the dragon bonus yet. Fuck it. Let's go with the alchemists. They're a bit more health up front. Why am I alchemist? Why are these two like this? They should be swapped around. That's silliness. Yoink doesn't poison, but Dr. Eno's soothing balm does. Eno leaps into the air and shoots a poison dart up to three enemies that are within three cells applying a stack of poison. All out attacks better, for sure. Like, there's no, not even the slightest bit of question, but uh, heal and steal Eno does poison. Viper 2? Yeah, go on. I'll, I'll lose a gold to have Viper 2 on. Yeah, so I get that question a lot, and I guess um, I should make a video on it just to quickly explain it so that it helps people out. Um, the reason I haven't done that yet is because it's a technique that I've only recently started using, like, 100% of the time myself, so it feels a bit like... Um, it feels a bit hypocritical for me to put out a guide video on a technique that I'm recently uh, using myself, but I suppose I do now use it reliably and I, I can explain why. So it's a technique called overflowing or blacklisting, but the, I think you, you, the, the question that you were posing was concerning overflowing. And essentially, um, you're buying from a shared and finite pool of heroes. And so... Um, the only thing that can't show up in the shop are things that you've already three-starred or things like particular instances which are on your board or on your bench. And so by buying them onto my, ben uh, onto my board, um, they cannot appear in the shop. And since they are things that I do not want, um... holy fucking shit, that was good news. Uh, so they're just very, very minimally in improving the odds of finding things in the shop that I want to rather than things that I don't. Um, and it's particularly, it's worth paying attention to the gold cost. So you want to overflow the things of a cost of the, of the heroes that you want to find. So if I want to find two and three costs, I should overflow the two and three costs and take them out of the pool. Um, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. 
Right, well, we've spent a hell of a lot, but we have improved our board a hell of a lot. Still haven't sorted out that fucking... No problem. I would um, add in a caveat to that particular technique, which is that I reached 16k and like the top 100 um, without using that technique almost at all. And that I personally believe that if a, um, a newer player, a less experienced player, focused on that rather than on um, learning compositions, learning positioning, learning underlord selection, um, learning how to keep an eye out for what's being contested and what's not and when to level and when to roll and economy management and stuff like that i think that overflowing is one of the things that you want to learn last um i think it is a very small improvement and you want to learn it last it's yeah um that that's just my opinion but uh I think I, I'm going to stand by it. because it can lead to mistakes. It can lead to stuff getting deleted off the board that you didn't want to get to deleted. Um, it can lead to uh, miscalculating your interest gold and missing interest gold. And for the very minuscule advantage that it provides, you really want to make sure that your muscle memory and mental focus and everything is, is completely solid before you start adding that into the mix. In my opinion. I would like to find this Lifestealer 2 star or get super lucky and find a Troll Warlord so that we have a better um, bit of value from this Mask of Madness. I do feel like we're missing a bit of value on the Mask of Madness here, but um, I'm going to try and level up to 9 nice and quickly. Um, you are most welcome, Ankana, and I'm, it's very kind of you to say that and, uh, it, you know, it, I don't necessarily get to know what people are learning or taking away from the stream unless they tell me so i do appreciate the feedback that's very kind thank you it's nice to hear so we're holding a very high health total which is excellent um because it's going to give me the time i need to go to nine and we do really need to go to nine because we're reliant on hitting good stuff here we're going to need the tier fours and fives to make this uh composition fully viable uh and we it, we're the only reason that we're doing so well in this lobby at the moment is because we've super high rolled a two-star viper and a dragon knight really really early and that is a unbelievably potent combination in fact i think it was one of the people in the chat i think it was maybe um or who was it i don't want to i don't want to falsely uh um credit somebody with the with the notion i think it might have been mark warden that put me onto it or was it um was it zamasunara i can't remember somebody told me about how strong the dragon knight viper was um and my initial uh real dislike of viper it just put me off it so much that I never used to go for it. And then he said, no, that, that combo is just like, you need to get it on your board, get it on your board right now. And in the end I did, and I was like, well, fuck, okay. I was just wrong. It's stupidly strong. Because the Viper is necessary anyway to provide your third decent poison option. Like, obviously, you know, it's, it's good because of the meta, because of the builds that are strong at the minute. Now, let's get rid of those two. Let's grab a Doom. Doom does want to come into this build. Lifestealer definitely wants to two-star. If he's willing to turn up, I'm all for it. Oh! Hello, sir. 
Then we want Shadow Shaman, just in case we don't find the Troll Warlord for an age. Uh, but then we level up to nine, we throw in the Doom, hope to find Troll Warlord to replace the Shadow Shaman and have a better Mom Carrier. Could go aggressively to nine right now, because we've got a few people, Detalex, Det uh, Kentritza, and um, Sina, no, Foster, have all gone to nine already. And so there's going to be a race to find the good stuff. The Troll Warlord already found, Tidehunter already found, Doom... Um, oh, so Phoenix has also found the Dragon Knight, the Viper, and the Doom. Uh, so he's in a very similar spot to us. And he's got a two-star lone druid as well. So he's um, probably rolled down quite a bit. I would imagine he's out of money. Is that right? Not all the way. So I'm guessing Phoenix health total uh, being so low has forced him to roll down earlier than he would have liked to. He'd have liked to go to nine and then roll down there. But he's rolled down hard on eight. He's found the tier fours. He's found a couple of tier fives. And that may well keep... No, he lost another round. That's unfortunate. I think I think with that level of, uh, of gear on the board, he probably would have expected to win that round. I mean, I would have expected him to win it. It's unfortunate. Right, Butterfly, very good here. Um, Butterfly is very good here. I don't think we need a Cadence necessarily. Let's have a little look. Yeah, no, I'm happy with the Butterfly here. And there's the Shadow Shaman 2-star just as a little upgrade. And then we've got Doom getting ready to 2-star as well. That would be great. No 4 Brute Alliance at the moment, but I'd much rather have the Dragon Alliance on than the 4 Brute one anyway. So if we find Axe, great, we'll stick him in uh, as we go to 10. And I'm pretty sure we will just save up now and go for 10. I've got the health just... As long as we don't lose a bunch of ra uh, uh, rounds in a row, then we should should get there. Mmm, unlucky Phoenix. I didn't think that was really deserved, but um, from my point of view, Phoenix going out is perfect because he was holding on to uh, Dragon Knight, Viper, Poison stuff, uh, exactly the stuff that we were looking for. So from a very selfish point of view, that is excellent news. We could stick in an additional Doom instead of this Tide Hunter. If we find Axe, we can just drop Tide because Tide's not providing anything right now. In fact, yes, I'm gonna. I'd rather have another Doom in than a Tide at the moment. I mean, tell me about it. I've been having some shit results recently. I I get it. I guess you didn't lose as much as you otherwise would just because of the MMR um, of this lobby. So I guess it was like 99 or something. Hundred and fourteen. That's more than I thought you'd lose there. I thought you'd lose less than that. That's a bit harsh. Now then, do we need to grab Mirana to try and block some level hunters? So Foster is going with some level mages. Um, then we've got Kentritza with the level hunters and then we've got an assassin rogue poison build and Cena's got the oh my lord that's a Dusa two star dragon knight two star and the high mages Woo! Cena's on fire We win another round, which is fantastic news. Our health total staying this high means that I will be able to get to 10 and then uh, hopefully try and outroll Cena. Cena did spend down everything to get that, but it's going to make him unbelievably strong. He's got an axe on the bench as well. Uh, I don't know why I just bought that Mirana. I really don't know why I just bought that Mirana. 
Hold. Now, I think we're going to hit Cena now. And I think we're going to get slapped. That's, that's, my, that's my prediction for everybody. Well, we didn't hit C uh, Cena, but let's see if we get slapped by the Rogue Assassin Poison build. I don't think we do. I think we slap him. Yeah. Oh, no. Much closer than I thought. All right, but we don't lose much health, so that's fine. I think the butterfly might have been better on the two-star owl, actually. I'm not sure, though. Oh, Cena got hit. That's great. We want Cena to loot. Like, Cena's holding Medusa and Dragon Knight, which are the two things that I want. And Axe. Like, all the tier fives that I want, he's holding. So we want him to get slapped, if at all possible. And now we get to pre-level and then go looking. I don't care about Wraith King too much, but I'll grab him in case we get the chance to hit Wraith King too. Because that's good enough where you just put it in. And I do think I'm right. I think Butterfly's better on the uh, Alchemist. Once he gets to two star, obviously we switch back over to Doom, but... Do I just wait two rounds? No. We waste a tiny bit of gold, I'm fine with it. Kill that off. Nice. That saves us a lot of health. Uh, keep that. Overflow that. Well then. Don't know about that. We haven't found the Deucer yet, so like just having the scaled in from the Tide Hunter is not currently worth it. The good news about having such a high health total is that they're going to knock each other out, at each other out um, over time. If we just lose slowly, we'll um, we'll rise up the rankings pretty quickly. So top four's been made. And we even win around, that's nice. So yeah, everybody looking a bit unhealthy except for us. Nice. I mean Death Prophet 2 star is probably worthwhile. And then we've got three powerful pairs. And enough time to maybe find some of them. But Doom and Alchemist should be swapped.
Ooh, that three-star Ember Spirit fucking hurts. My lord, he hurts. Fortunately, that exorcism on the on the Death Prophet really hurts them as well, so that's cool. All right, I think we put this guy out now. No, not quite. Does Foster put Cena out? Please, Foster. Do it for me. Damn it, Foster. You had one job. <laughs> fucking hell. Uh, that's interesting. I think we probably want the Bloodthorn. Yeah. Oh, baby. I doubt... Well, I suppose what we do is we grab Medusa and then if we want to, we drop t uh, Axe and Doom for Tide Medusa if the last remaining player is the Mage. So if Foster becomes the endgame boss, then we drop the two Brutes for the Scaled. Wraith King 2 is busted! He's the only reason we did all right there. Like, that Dragon Knight 2-star should just put us in the ground, but... All right, Foster is out of there. So, the need for the... Uh... Oh, no, Cena is also high-level mages. Fuck me. Uh, more Wraith King. That's just amusing. I don't think we need to worry about that right now. Double Doom is beautiful. Now we would like to give him an item. Which item would we like to give him? Honestly? I don't know. I'll give him the Deso. Fuck it. We're hitting everything we need in case we need to make a switch. That's good. Jesus Christ, that Ember Spirit slaps. Wraith King 2 is nuts! Nuts! One of those two should knock each other out. Let's hope to God Daphne knocks out Cena. I doubt it. Oh, but he nearly did. Fucking hell. Okay, that's great. That's excellent news. So I still haven't put the scaled in, because I'm being Mr. Johnny Big Balls over here, but um, we've got the option to if we need. And it looks like we will need to if Cena becomes the, the problem. It looks like he might. Let's see. All right, well, with Axe 2, I'm going to hold because we don't have Deusa 2 yet and we don't have a Cadence, so Deusa 1's less impressive. The Wraith King's in just an amazing position. Yeah, he's out. Now please knock out Cena before I go before I have to face him. 
Go on, Delphine, do it. Yes! Woohoo! Oh, that's going to be a good chunk of MMR. It really is. A hundred! Oh, that's been a long time since I've seen plus a hundred. Holy crap. Nice. I'd love to say that that makes some progress, but that simply mends some of the damage that I've already done today. Oh, beautiful. 